Hey you guys, welcome back to Tomes of Terror. Now, as I mentioned in my last book review about Literally Dead, I am a sucker for a good Halloween horror anthology, whether it's in book or film form. I like both of those things. Uh, the one I'm talking about today, which is called This is Halloween by James A. Moore, is a little bit different than the last one I talked about uh, because this one is actually 10 mostly Halloween-themed stories by a single author rather than, you know, being a bunch of various authors. Uh, and several of these stories as well are interconnected. Uh, this book is actually, I found it on Kindle Unlimited. It's actually slightly older than I realized, um, you know, when I first checked it out or whatever. It was actually first published in 2016. So not that old, but I was just like thinking that it came out this year. Now, I read that some of the stories that are included in this collection link in with some of uh, James A. Moore's many novels, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And I'm not entirely sure like which ones. I think this is the first work of his that I've read. And again, this seems to be like another a case of another author who's been around for like ages he's been writing novels and he writes like a lot of rpg manuals like since the mid 1990s i think he first published in 1994 and somehow i'm just discovering him now so you know better late than never i guess now while a few of these 10 stories were not directly halloween related all of them did kind of have a very similar like autumnal vibe to them and they did kind of you know to greater or lesser degrees uh, evoke that kind of very specifically very frosty nostalgic New England kind of feel that always kind of puts me right in the Halloween spirit even though you know if you guys know me you know I live in Florida so I don't ever get to experience a chilly Halloween firsthand unfortunately maybe someday I'll live somewhere that has actual seasons and I can actually do that shit but uh you know <laughs> one of these days one of these days it'll happen so uh some of these tales too like tapped into a larger mythology about a place called Beldam Woods and an ancient witch and her three sons like they're kind of like earth but i don't want to say if they were like earth spirits or like demons or something like that but it's like a witch and three sons and they're like supernatural and uh also several of them had a similar setup of like a group of kids trick-or-treating and being chased and or attacked by something supernatural so i will say that because of that a couple of the stories came across as a little bit samey but i didn't really mind it all that much um i just kind of like read the whole book like approach it as you know just kind of like a collection of creepy narratives about different people that were sort of like taking place all around the same town like around the same time even though technically I think they weren't but it does it did kind of have that vibe to it so the first story the dry season is one of these aforementioned trick-or-treating stories there's a pair of women named Linda and Nancy and they're taking their kids and some other of the neighborhood kids like just out on the rounds like doing trick-or-treating like you do now they start start to feel as though they're being followed or watched or something and they're also kind of like um you know their discussion is sort of about how creeped out they are by uh the fact that this house that had been empty for many years like in the neighborhood um after this guy named martin lundgren supposedly killed a bunch of children there now appears to be occupied like it has somebody living in it now as the story goes on you discover that maybe the town rumors about what really happened regarding the murders of those children uh, weren't what everyone thought and that's about as far as I'm gonna go with that one now the second story was actually one of the best ones in the collection in my opinion uh, it's called harvest moon and it's about a widower who moves from Los Angeles to a quaint little town I think it's in New, Eng New England called Summitville like after he retires now he actually loves the place at first he's like it's like the picture the perfect like picture postcard like new england halloween kind of thing he actually like ends up finding romance with like another like local woman named helen and he even befriends his grumpy but ultimately good-hearted like elderly neighbor whose name is ned as halloween approaches though uh the narrator begins to become a little bit unsettled by um just how into halloween everyone in this town seems to be and in particular, their kind of like obsessive tradition of building these really, really creepy scarecrows and positioning all of them in the town square, like facing inward. Uh, this one had like a really good, cool, like old school pagan kind of ambiance to it, which I really, really dug. 
So the third story was called Hathburn Avenue, and it was very similar to the first story in that it revolved around a group of kids who were trick-or-treating and came across a house that wasn't right somehow. You know what I mean? Uh, this one is actually told not from the point of view of the parents like the first one was, but f uh, from the POV of one of the kids um, who's talking about how one of his friends named Chuck recently died in a house fire that also like claimed the rest of his family as well. Um, so as the narrator and his little friends or whatever are kind of trooping around the neighborhood, they come across this house like on a street they don't usually go on that looks um, very unsettlingly like the one that burned down not too long ago. Um, so yeah, this was like a really good evocative story as well. Although, as I mentioned, it's very similar in setup um, to the first story and actually kind of in pay off too. So much so that while I was researching this review, like while I was writing uh, the review, I actually got them confused with one another for a minute and like thought that the first story like had the house fire aspect in this one. But yeah, it's two different stories. So the fourth one is called Bone Harvest. And this was one of the ones that tied in with this larger uh, lore about Beldam Woods. And though it wasn't really Halloween centric, it was still like a pretty cool concept. It was about, there was like a couple of, I guess, like botanists or botanical enthusiasts, if you want to call them that. Uh, their names were Reggie and Natalie, and they go on a vacation in these supposedly haunted woods um, because the area is home to a number of very, very rare plants that are found nowhere else in the world, uh, almost all of which are deadly poisonous. Now, at some point during this excursion, uh, Natalie gets attacked, that's all I'm gonna say, and then, like, eventually the supernatural comes into play. And so this story sort of delves into this mythos that James Amor created about this ancient witch named um, Alvina Bathory and her three sons. Now, the son featured in this particular story is actually named Robert, or better known as Old Bones. Um, I really liked the imagery and the gore in this one. This one's, like, pretty gory. Though, I think I would have preferred more of, like, a Halloween focus, but that's okay. This, like, this was, like, a pretty cool story, too. Now, the next story, Harvest Gods Revisited, was also pretty great. Uh, and this was another one of the interconnected stories, but was a lot more Halloween forward. So this one is actually told from the perspective of a Halloween loving little boy named Ray, whose dad actually died sometime previously. And he's now been kind of like bummed out, dispirited, whatever, by this boyfriend that his mom is going around with, who's a very kind of like fun averse and just generally shitty human being. So the story is basically just Ray um, you know, trying to like leaving school on Halloween and trying to take a shortcut to get home quicker so he can like get ready and go out trick or treating because he's super excited. But he's never taken the shortcut before and he gets lost. And he runs into another one of the witch's sons, whose name is Jack. And he ends up making a bargain with this son uh, that has that ties back in with his kind of like less than ideal living situation. So I think this was another one of my favorites in the collection. It was very simple, very short, very sweet, and it just had like a really cool like Halloween mood to it. Now the next story, Patchwork, was about the third of the witch's sons, uh, whose name is Patrick. Now I think this was probably, in the whole collection, this is probably my least favorite. Um, it might have been the longest. I mean, it's still not all that long. It's still, I don't even know if it, I'd call it like novella length, although it might have been. Um, but it was really complex. Like it jumped back and forth between several different characters and there was like a bunch of things going on in spite of the relative brevity of the story as a whole. So it's basically about Patrick pretending to be a human and also kind of like trying to please his mother through various sacrifices. And the main story about Patrick is just mostly about him like having a job delivering milk and stuff for a dairy along with another guy named Denny who's kind of a pedophile, like kind of a creeper. Like, so there's that going on. Then also there's like a parallel plot about a group of girls, like a bunch of school girls, planning to bully this new girl who's just moved to town named Erica, like essentially by taking her into these cursed woods, you know, that we've mentioned before and making her think that they were forcing her to eat one of the poisonous mushrooms. And then there was another thing, like another kind of like plot thing over here about a woman named Lacey whose baby had died 
and she had a husband who beat her and possibly molested her daughters and i can't really remember how that tied into the main plot like i'm pretty sure that it did but i can't remember right now like how it did so like overall this was a good story too i just felt like it was kind of like all over the place um it was way too convoluted for as relatively short as it was. All the plot tendrils it had going on, I think would have been better in novel form, like where everything could have been fleshed out more. It's possible, like I said, that this one was referring back to some larger mythos that he had like laid out in another book. It did definitely have that feel to it. Now, the next story, Night Eyes, was written with Charles R. Rutledge and was another one concerning a group of kids. Uh, these ones actually, they specifically said it was Georgia in 1973, uh, who were kind of out and about on Halloween night. So they're actually trying to avoid a family of bullies that one of them had pissed off earlier. So they decide to go trick or treat at the old Grambling place, which is supposedly the home of this creepy old man where nobody goes. Things don't go the way you think they do. Uh, this one was also really good and Halloween-y, but again, kind of similar to the previous two that I mentioned that were about kids going trick-or-treating and like going to a house they shouldn't essentially. So the next one was called Blood Tide and that was another one with not seemingly not much to do with Halloween but it told the story of a I guess like a supernatural being of some kind whose name was like Jason Solis and he at the beginning he buys a property from another character who is also kind of like a supernatural being I feel like named Albert Miles who was featured in a couple of the earlier stories. Now Solis says that he wants a girl for some some implied purpose and then we start to follow said girl uh, who is actually like a sex worker uh, like a higher end escort named Maggie and she ends up getting stalked by a couple of dudes who are like going to rob and rape her uh, this was again like another good story though I admit just like the last story that it felt like it was a fragment a fragment of some like larger narrative and I didn't really get exactly like what the connection was between the soulless character and what was happening with Maggie's character because it seemed like there was like this book ending of like these supposedly I thought like it was implied that they were like supernatural beings of some kind and that they wanted her for something but then like the middle part was almost like a thriller like that was kind of grounded in reality so I didn't really get what the connection was between those two things. Now the penultimate story Shades of Grey uh, was another one of my favorite ones even though again it wasn't particularly Halloweeny, but that was okay like um, you know I really really like this one a lot. So this one was actually told from the POV of a private investigator named Neil and at the beginning of the story he overhears someone telling someone else that something is following them. Now, thereafter, the person who was being followed turns up dead, like in a gruesome way, and Neil sort of gets intrigued enough to begin conducting his own investigation into whatever it is that's following and perhaps murdering these people, and specifically whether it's human or not. Like, he also kind of gets his brother involved, who's a photographer, so there's that kind of stuff going on. This one had a really compelling, like, noir kind of feel to it and that made it like really appealing to me even though it wasn't like very Halloween centric. So the last story, The Walker Place, uh, was the fourth story in the collection that centered around a group of kids on Halloween. This time out, uh, they end up going to another notorious house in town, but this time the house, uh, the whole, uh, like a whole family was brutally murdered in there, and the kids go in there and perhaps unwisely end up using a Ouija board to contact some spirits, which, you know, you, you, you've seen the shows. It's never a good idea to do that. Uh, so yeah, so this wasn't like the most original tale, but it was still like pretty creepy and also like really entertaining. Good kind of like short way to close the book out. So although the stories, I mean, all the stories here are not explicitly like Halloween based, there was enough of that vibe to make this a really good read for, you know, October, October for the spooky season. Some of the stories, as I mentioned, seem a little bit fragmentary as though they were referencing other longer stories like outside the scope of this book, which I believe some of them were if I'm reading some of the reviews correctly. Um, that's not necessarily a deal breaker you can still understand what's going on in the stories even if you haven't read the other novels that they're supposedly referring to but I think if you had read some other works of his that linked back to this maybe you would get more out of it you there'd be more like you, you know there'd be more depth to it for you because you would know like a lot more about the mythos and about these characters and stuff like that also uh, as I mentioned a handful of the stories four of them I believe you know are kind of similar in the sense that they all involve a group of kids or a group of people like trick-or-treating and like going to a house they shouldn't or something chasing them or something attacking them so and they were 
you know, I'm not gonna lie, they were so similar that I mixed up the details like from a few of them, especially like the first one and the third one. So, but you know, like I said, it didn't really bother me all that much because they just conjured such a great uh, mood that was like really effective and really spooky. So it didn't really bother me that they were kind of all similar stories. So all in all, I thought this was like a very strong collection of stories that had, you know, enough of that vintage Halloween atmosphere to put you in that proper frame of mind for the best day of the year. So so that will do it for this Tomes of Terror, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Have a very, very safe and very, very happy Halloween. Bye.